Hi, and welcome to The Community Producers, a monthly show produced by volunteers like myself. I'm your host, Cheyenne Shapitka, and I'm excited to bring you this month's exciting local content. It's taken a few years to happen, but this summer, a long-anticipated specialty vehicle hit the streets in Nelson, offering the community a new accessible form of transportation. So we have a new wheelchair accessible van in our fleet now. There's been a lot of excitement in the community about this. There's people coming up to me in the community and talking about how much they're, um, they're excited about the vehicle and how it's such a great service to our community. So back in 2013, Nelson Cares was very aware because of our work on seniors transportation issues of the need for an accessible van in the community. Um, it was just, it was not available through car rental agencies. At that time there were no accessible taxis and even the transit options that were accessible weren't accessible for a lot of seniors. So at the same time, Randy Jensen was experiencing a, that in a personal way through her mother's and she wanted to take her mother out and couldn't find any way other than buying a $40,000 vehicle to take her mom out for Sunday. So, you know, sort of a synchronicity is a wonderful thing. Uh, Randy came to us and my working group uh, on the Seniors Transportation Project jumped in. We part, car share was part of that, so we started dis discussions with Kootenai Car Share um, because that seemed like the wisest, best way to get one out into the community as an asset as opposed to attaching it to one nonprofit agency. And uh, some other community agencies joined in and we launched a f very successful fundraising campaign. It took time for sure and it was a lot of work but uh, we had some wonderful donors come through for us. Uh, we got um, uh, Daybreak Rotary made a major donation, uh, Vince DeVito as part of the um, Take Action for Sick Kids uh, money that had been left over. They wanted to see that go to something that would help because of course the community isn't just about seniors, it's also about family members who are adults, children, friends, and so on. Um, we also, uh, we applied for a CIP grant in the City of Nelson, RDC Key Areas AE, and the Village of Salmo all came through with together a major grant. Um, and then of course numerous smaller donations, everything from $20 to $500 just put us over the top. And then. Along the way, Nelson Cares came through. We had a surplus van that just needed some repairs, and they donated it to, to Kootenai Car Share for just the cost of repairs. So that really enabled us to say, okay, we're done fundraising, let's move forward and get this van into the community. The wheelchair van has been a big issue around. We in the community here in Nelson have limited accessible transportation services. So the wheelchair van fits a hole that Handy Dart can't fill. Our Handy Dart is our transit accessible transportation for seniors, but our Handy Dart does not leave the community and it only operates on a Monday to Friday daytime basis. So evenings, weekends, any appointments that somebody might have outside of the community, specialist appointments and trail, there is no accessible transportation service to accommodate folks at all. So this is a huge, a huge filler of the gap. The wheelchair the van provides people the ability to have accessible transportation outside of the community and on those evening and weekends, which seniors, seniors want to participate in more than just medical appointments. They'd like to go to the movies once in a while. They'd like to go to the park on the weekends. And those kinds of social outings aren't factored in very well in our bigger picture of transportation services. So this provides individuals the ability to sign up for a membership with the Kootenai Car Share, have access to that. It took a while, it was three years in the making, but now we have the van and I'm really looking forward to taking my mom down to the Dairy Queen, you know, and maybe down to Lakeside Park and maybe out to the house for a family dinner now and again. And, um, Yay, Nelson, thank you. The feedback from the community, like through the service providers that we work with, the folks at City Hall is, this is amazing. I mean, this is, as far as we know, no one has ever done this through a car share organization. And I mean, I think it's the reason that the fundraising campaign was so successful is because people would think about it and think, well, that's kind of a no-brainer. It's like, you know, it's not like one agency is now responsible for insuring it and, you know, maintaining it and hiring drivers by 
putting it with a car share organization. It just belongs to the community and they just run it like they would any of their vehicles you know, which are sort of self-sustaining because it's a cooperative. It's opening up a lot of doors for people. We, we take for granted access to our community, but it's really something that a lot of folks don't, aren't able to participate in. So being able to get out of the house, to reduce that isolation, to participate in your community, holds significant change, not just for seniors, but for anybody. Anyone who's a member can use a vehicle, whether in their own wheelchair or not. Of course, we're trying to gear that towards people in wheelchairs because it's a, such a special service that we provide to the community. Um, but anyone who in the community, whether you have a temporary injury or you have um, a lifelong disability, you're able to use a van. And even if not, even if you want to take just a fun ride in the wheelchair van, you can do that as well. Any information about the car share or the fleet or about the wheelchair van, you can access on our website, which is carsharecoop.ca, and there's a phone number on there as well in an email and we'd be happy to help you out any way we can. Special Olympics Castlegar is currently strutting its stuff after our local athletes medaled at these annual provincial games. Here's more now on the games and this athletic organization. The event Casco Special, Special Olympic recently attended was the Special Olympic Provincial Games in Kamloops, BC. It was my first time going to the Special Olympic Games in Kamloops. Um, it was a very fun event. I got two gold medals there. In 25 uh, freestyle and 50 breaststroke, I got my medals in, that, in those events. I was pretty astonished when I, when I found out that we were second place. I was, I was actually sitting down in my seat still wondering, like, was where we just called, <laughs> so because uh, I've never won anything mostly in my life, so I usually, uh, uh, with my competition wise, I I don't take competitions. Usually, I just watch them than it is to take something on my own. Uh, but being an athlete now, I, I'm very proud to to actually honor myself to have medals. Uh, so it's really cool and awesome. As much as the, the people that are playing the bowling, they are so experienced, and these bowlers are awesome. God, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. And like, you got people all around BC joining into one group and just playing it all out and just having a fun time. It was just an awesome afternoon. We ended up with seven athletes going, our bowling team with five bowlers, and two of our swimmers, Chris Paulson and Liam Donnelly, who unfortunately couldn't be here today. Liam took the bronze in a high div, and he took it in his breaststroke. Liam's a very powerful swimmer, just like Chris. We have been active enough to get athletes to the higher levels, but this is the first year we've had so many and every single one come home with some hardware. Special O has been around here for a very, very long time. I've only been involved with it here in Castlegar for about five years. During that time, I've seen a very small team grow into a large, active, dynamic team that's uh, also managed to make us grow from three or four sports at the most to the 10 that we've got going now with possible future additions. Special Olympics gives our athletes something fun to do, something to look forward to every week that's self-chosen and a lot of fun. Uh, it involves coaches who are all volunteers from all walks of life, from college students to high school students to grandmothers. It involves being organized and getting where you need to go, finding your ride there, finding a way to get home, all the different skills of sports, and especially one thing our team's really noted for in this community is sportsmanship. Special League offers me a, a way to compete with people like me that has a disability. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great opportunity for other people to do it too. The whole community has a chance to make a contribution, especially right now because we've got our giant bottle drive going on at 2908 Columbia Avenue. 
Just look for the great big blue sign that says Special Olympics Bottle Drive. You'll know you're in the right place. Easy access with a semi-circle driveway, in and out, toss your bottles on the pile and away you go. Thank you everybody that's already donated bottles. It's so amazing the support we get in this community from our local businesses too. So if you're an athlete and think that you might like to be part of Special Olympics BC Castlegar, you can get in touch with me. I'll refer you on to the registrar and I'm at W-H-E-E L-A-F-O-R-T-U-N-E at shaw.ca. Castlegar is set to play host to a new adventure race at the end of the month. Local organizers of Fear BC are excited to show off the West Kootenai landscape while bringing a new event to the area. Welcome to the outdoor portion of Fear BC is proud to present the West Kootenai's first multidisciplinary adventure race, September 30th, Castlegar, BC. Typically, an adventure race is people getting out in the wilderness experiencing something new. Uh, typically, there's challenges, there's trekking, there's various disciplines, cycling, hiking, uh, sometimes canoeing, paddling, whitewater rafting. As with every adventure race, you have to have something unique to set yourself apart. Lucky enough, we live in the beautiful place that we do. Uh, we have the four elements adventure race. Earth, air, fire, and water. But water doesn't really work into fear. So fire, earth, air, and river. So at some point, you can imagine there's gonna be a fire component, an earth component, an air component, and some sort of wet component. Racers never find out what that is till the day of. I think they're funny. I think they're great, it might frustrate some racers, but they're excellent challenges and that's kind of what sets us apart. What is north on the compass again? How many degrees? 360 or zero. 360 or zero. Okay. In preparation for Fear BC, uh, we're hosting a couple clinics of navigation. Typically when you come into a region like the West Kootenays here, there's a small group of their great navigators and a lot of people that are like, yeah, I used a compass in high school. So when going out in the woods, it's a, it's a big step. So we offer a host of free navigation clinics leading up to the event. Um, today is one of those days where we're gonna have a group out to use their compass skills after they've been taught. This is a team event, so teams of three. Uh, and it can be any combination of teams. We have co-ed teams signed up, we have all girls teams signed up. Actually, an all girls team was the first team to sign up. Challenged another team to go. Uh, we've had people sign up as a single. Hey, can you find me a team? Well, we've got some people that were two, had somebody drop out, they're like, hey, we need somebody, we can put them together. So three person teams. Typically, the next question that follows up is, how, like, do we have to stay together? And the basic rule of thumb is you need to stay together. Our anticipation for time on a race like this, uh, if a really fast team with good navigation skills that takes the challenges under their wing and goes with them, probably a little over six hours. At some point, we need to cut the race off and there's time cutoffs along the way. The longest we expected to take a team and still get all the checkpoints is probably about nine hours. Uh, you can sign up on fearbc.com, uh, all the information's there. Um, there's gear lists on the website, the, the mandatory gear list that you'll need to have. Uh, there's a little backstory about how the race came to be, a little bit extra information. So. A West Kootenai outdoor adventure attraction has thrill seekers of all ages soaring to new heights over Kokanee Creek Canyon. Here's a look at the thrilling zip line outside Nelson that offers riders a bird's eye view. It's an adventure of a lifetime, flying through the treetops hundreds of feet above the ground while soaking in the panoramic scenery. This is the experience at Kokanee Mountain Zip Line, a family business that first got started in 2012 by two brothers from the Okanagan. I'd been in the industry for a lot of years and just uh, decided to go out on my own and uh, we knew Nelson was an awesome spot so we picked here. Me and my brother had actually gone uh, skiing through here probably about seven or eight years ago and we uh, knew it was an awesome area and uh, we were standing around looking for places to go one day and uh, someone suggested to take a look at Kokanee Creek and uh, we cruised on up and uh, me and my course manager Al Roland were up here and we were just blown away by how spectacular it was up here so uh, three years later here we are. Kokanee Mountain's course is made up of six zip lines with a total distance of 1.6 kilometers, 
giving riders a bird's eye view of Kokanee Creek Canyon. Our highest platform of the day is about 70 feet. Um, that's uh, where you're up in the trees. You really get that cool feeling of being suspended right next to the treetops. Um, and then when you're out in the middle of the line, you're probably 300, 350 feet up in the air, which is uh, super awesome up here. And uh, line four is our longest one, 2,400 feet. Um, you're getting up to 100 kilometers an hour on that line. If uh, you're sort of the bigger folk, uh, gravity doesn't work there. So yeah, really awesome. The fully guided tour takes about two hours to complete and there are no age or height restrictions for riding. Kokanee Mountain Zipline can accommodate anyone who is between 50 and 275 pounds. Getting some uh, really great feedback on uh, the product that we're offering here. Um, I think the best part about it is that everybody can do it. Five to 89 is what we've had. So five to 89 is a pretty uh, nice range to get everybody out here. And uh, for me, because I've been a guide most of my life, is it's the people that you get to go out with um, is really what changes your zip lines every day. And that's what makes it worth coming back every day is uh, the different people that come out here, which is really cool. It was awesome. I, it was amazing, loads of fun. It was awesome. I'm happy to be on the ground though. <laughs> uh, I liked it because I went really fast, but when I did a cannonball and I had to hold my legs the whole way. Stepping off is terrifying, <laughs> but once you're off, it's good, it's awesome. And with the amount of smiles coming in on the last line, it's plain to see why visitors from near and far are jumping at the opportunity to get on this breathtaking ride. I think uh, in our guest book we've had, you know, everywhere from Guam, Germany, um, West Virginia, all over the place. So it's, uh, it's really cool to see the people that come to the valley here as well. Kokanee Mountain Zipline operates from spring through to the fall. For more information or to book a zipline tour, visit them online at zipkokanee.com. That's it for this episode of the Community Producers. If you have a story idea or content you'd like to share with us, contact us via our Shaw TV Kootenays Facebook page or email us at kootenays.shawtv at sgrb.ca. I'm Shiana Shapitka. Thanks for watching.